Hello. Few sights are more impressive than a naked eye comet visible in the twilight sky, either just before dawn in the morning or at dusk in the evening. It's some years since we had a naked eye comet visible from this country, but I'm pleased to say that now is the time, because at the moment, in the morning sky before dawn, there is a lovely comet putting on an appearance. Its name is Comet C2020 F3 Neowise, and uh, the reason for that name will become apparent a little later on. Bright naked eye comets don't come along very often. The brightest comet of recent years was this one, Comet McNaught, that was very bright in January of 2007. Now, this incredible picture by Terry Lovejoy from Australia shows the comet with its incredible dust tail stretching right across the frame. Sadly, this comet was not well seen from the Northern Hemisphere. This was primarily a Southern Hemisphere object, and as you can see, they had an absolutely glorious view. Now, this particular comet, Comet McNaught of early 2007, was a very, very long period comet indeed. In other words, it came in with a period of about six and a half million years, effectively a a once opportunity, and went out still with a period of nearly 100,000 years. And that means it approached the solar system from very great distance. Comets like Comet McNaught come from a region known as the Oort Cloud. Now, in this diagram, you can see the blue arrow and the blob. Now, that is the centre of our solar system. And you'll see there are two components to this. There is a sort of flattened disc-like region, and there's also a large spherical ball around the outside. Now, the large spherical ball around the outside, which extends a third of the way to the next nearest star, is called the Oort Cloud, after the Dutch astronomer Jan Oort, who first proposed it. And it's from the Oort Cloud that Comet McNaught would have originated. Within that, there is that flattened disk region known correctly as the Edgeworth Kuiper Belt, named after the two astronomers, the Irish astronomer Kenneth Edgeworth and the American astronomer Gerard Kuiper. And from that flattened uh, disk of material extending out beyond the planets, we have comets with periods of a few thousand years. So some bright comets come from the Oort cloud, some come from the Kuiper belt region. And in general, the comets coming from these areas are effectively once in a lifetime or once in a generation or basically non-periodic events. Their periods are just so long. There are comets in much shorter periods that uh, go round in the inner solar system, but we're not interested in those at the present time. Now, when a comet is a long, long way from the sun, in the bitterly cold outer reaches of space, it looks a bit like this. This is a typical comet nucleus. It's made largely of water ice mixed with some exotic ices and mixed with many grains of dust. And this cosmic ice ball, dust ball, dirty snowball, call it what you will, is generally irregular in shape, as you can see there, and it's covered around the outside with a layer of dark, sooty dust. And when it's a long way from the sun, it is cold and inert. Now, these objects are generally on long, looping orbits around the sun. And as it comes in towards the sun, the dark surface absorbs the radiation from the sun and it starts to warm up. And eventually, the dark crust on the surface cracks, exposing the underlying ice to view. And you can see what happens in this artist's impression. Jets spurt out through the cracks. The icy material is sublimating, turning from an ice into a vapour, dragging out the dust grains with it and eventually the comet becomes surrounded, the nucleus that is, in a 
gaseous envelope called the coma. And here we can see uh, a comet, Comet Humison from 1962, and you can see the head of the comet on the left there, and you can see that diaphanous blue region. Now that is the gas tail, iron tail, plasma tail, call it what you will. Because when the material spurts out through those fissures in the dusty crust of the comet, and you get the gaseous coma forming around it, the coma is a mixture of dust grains, of neutral gas, and also of gas that is ionised. The comet, as it moves through the solar system, is in what we call the solar wind, a continuous stream of gas and electrically charged particles flowing out from the sun in all directions. And the solar wind interacts with the coma and will ionise some of the gas, and those ions are pushed back away from the head of the comet by the solar wind. It's a bit like a windsock on an airfield. The wind blows and the windsock blows away from the wind direction, and so the comet's gas tail or iron tail will always point away from the sun. Now, as the comet approaches still closer to the sun, the coma grows in extent, and the gas tail becomes more obvious, and Eventually, a lot of the dust grains that are being released from the comet nucleus will themselves move away from the head of the comet, producing a second tail, the dust tail, and that is generally the one we're interested in. Because gas tails of comets are generally rather faint. They're also bluish in colour because of the uh, ionisation of the gases in that tail whereas the dust tail is yellowish and consists of dust grains released from the comet reflecting sunlight. And it is the radiation pressure of sunlight that pushes those grains away from the comet's head. And very often the dust tail will curve away from the direction exactly opposite to the sun, and so you'll get the gas tail straight moving away directly from the anti-sun direction, and curving away from that will be the broader dust tail. So here we can see one of the most beautiful comets of all time. This was Donati's Comet of 1859, one of the most beautiful comets ever seen, it's been said. And this artwork from the late Paul Doherty shows the comet over Paris in 1859. Now you can see the broad curving dust tail there on the right, and those straight streamers going up rather faint, and that is the gas or iron tail. So if we look at this simple anatomy of a comet, we can see the broad, curving, yellowy dust tail, the straighter, narrower, fainter iron tail, which is bluish, the comet's coma, which is at the bottom there, and the nucleus is hidden entirely within that coma. Now you can see that the tails may be millions, tens of millions of kilometres in extent. Even the coma can easily be a hundred thousand kilometres up to maybe even a million kilometres in extent. But the nucleus, the solid part in the middle, is typically between one and ten kilometres in extent. And it's incredible to think that all that activity of the comet stems from that tiny, icy, dusty nucleus right in the heart of the head of the comet. Now, I've already said that Comet McNaught of January 2007 was the last really bright comet that was seen but from the Southern Hemisphere. But what about Northern Hemisphere observers? This is Comet Hale Bop of March 1997. It was an absolute beauty. It hung in the evening sky for many weeks, and we all rather missed it when it eventually disappeared. You can see here the incredible broad dust tail of Comet hale bopp and the blue streamers in the gas or iron tail above. But it is the dust tail that gives the comet its brightness. hale bopp was a comet that came in from the Edgeworth Kuiper belt, has a period of a few thousand years. Now the most famous comet of them all, of course, is Halley's Comet. 
It comes back every 75 or 76 years, and it was last back in the spring of 1986. And here's a lovely view of it. Again, we have the blue iron tail straight at the top and the curving streamers of the dust tail there curving round to the bottom. Now, Halley's Comet uh, has an orbit because it's only uh, 75, 76 years, at furthest from the Sun, it's only just out beyond the orbit of Neptune. So it's right at the inner edge, if you like, of the Edgeworth Kuiper Belt. But in March of 1986, the European space probe Chiotto hurtled through the head of Halley's Comet and sent back this amazing picture of the peanut-shaped nucleus of that comet, 16 kilometres by nine kilometers, and uh, you can see it there. The uh, dark area on the right is away from the sun, but on the left, the side that's being uh, irradiated by sunlight, the crust is cracking, and there are those amazing jets and streamers of dust and gas spurting out through the fissures in the nucleus. Now, the nucleus of Halley's Comet is fairly large as comets go. Much more usually, we would see nuclei like these three. Comet 81P Vild 2, top left, 19P Borelli, and 9P Temple 1. And these comet nuclei are um, around about three to five kilometres in extent. And typically, that's the size of a cometary nucleus. And you can see there these irregular, knobbly, dark surfaces. So what about this new comet, the one we're interested in, Comet 2020 F3 Neowise? These images that don't look particularly spectacular were taken with the Neowise spacecraft and that line of three red fuzzy blobs were the discovery images of the comet on the 27th of March this year, 2020. And you can see the comet is moving across the field of view. And they are the infrared or heat images of the nucleus of this comet at great distance from the Sun. Now, the Neowise spacecraft was originally the WISE spacecraft, the Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer. It was launched in 2009, and for two years it surveyed infrared objects in the universe. Its mission was over, and then for two years it was in hibernation. It was aroused from its slumbers in 2013 and given a completely new lease of life as the NEOWISE spacecraft, the Near Earth Object Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer. And this is looking at comets and asteroids that may come near to the Earth. Now, as it happens, Comet F3 NEOWISE is not going to come particularly close to the Earth, but it is going close to the Sun. In fact, that's already happened on the 3rd of July this year. You can see that the comet coming in from the bottom there and going up inside the orbit of Mercury, which is the lilac circle there, and then looping out to the left-hand side, crossing the orbit of Earth there, and in fact it's closest to the Earth on the 23rd of July, but it doesn't come any closer than 103 million kilometres of our planet. For a comet to come so close to the Sun is always of interest. But what is particularly interesting is that the Neowise observation showed that the nucleus of this comet is about five kilometres across. And that is relatively large for a comet going so close to the Sun. Now, there's always a risk when a comet goes so close to the Sun that the tremendous heating from the Sun causes so much outgassing that the nucleus breaks apart and is disrupted and the comet fizzles. So we were very keen to see what would happen when Comet F3 Neowise went close to the Sun. And in the lead up to perihelion, its closest approach on the 3rd of July, it was visible in the field of view of the SOHO spacecraft. And the SOHO spacecraft is looking at the sun. And there's the sun in the middle of the field of view there. There is a, uh, a dark disk around it, a coronagraph. And you can see the path of Comet Neowise between June the 22nd and June the 27th in the lower right corner. And here we can see a time-lapse of images 
of Soho there, showing the comet coming up and brightening as it approaches perihelion. And the really good news is that the comet stays firm. It does not break up. And there is the view on the 27th of June, just uh, six days before perihelion, uh, showing comet Neowise uh, brightening really nicely as it approaches the sun. Well, having passed perihelion, the comet then came out into the early morning sky. And towards the end of the first week of July, just a few days after perihelion, the comet appeared in the pre-dawn sky. And this uh, lovely picture, taken on the 6th of July, shows Comet Neowise in the dawn twilight around about 3 a.m. British summer time. Yes, the background sky is bright, but there's no mistake in the comet there. It's beautiful head and a tail stretching back several degrees towards the upper right. Now, here we have a lovely time lapse on the 7th of July in the morning of Comet Neowise rising higher in the sky, rising into a, a cloud bank there. But you can see here that over the next few weeks, Comet Neowise is going to trek from the north-northeast in the morning sky to the north-northwest in the evening sky. You can see there the dates along the path of the comet. It's moving from Auriga, then through into neighbouring Lynx, and then through into Ursa Major. That's the, the Great Bear. Mostly people recognise the seven stars of the plough there. So what's going to happen is at the moment you need to get up pretty early and you need to be looking in the north-northeast from about half past two onwards and the comet is a beautiful sight in binoculars. As the comet is now moving into darker skies, it's now possible to see not only the dust tail, the bright tail, which we've seen for a few days, but also the thin streamers of the iron tail stretching up in the anti-sun direction. Now, over the next few days, the comet is moving higher above the horizon. It's going to be visible earlier on. And as it moves higher and into darker skies, the view should be very good indeed. By mid-July, the comet will be best seen in the evening sky in the north-northwest around about between 10 to 10.30 p.m. If you're in the southern part of the United Kingdom, you want to go out about 10 p.m., and look towards the north-northwest, and the comet will be there. Obviously, the earlier you catch it, the higher it will be above the horizon. There is no doubt that this is a superb object. This amazing video from the International Space Station, taken in the first week of July, shows the comet there rising above the Earth. The space station's 400 kilometres up, travelling around the Earth at enormous speed. There's the day side of the Earth growing brighter. There's the comet, and there's the brilliant planet Venus over on the right-hand side. A fantastic view. Well, this is what you hope to be able to see in the days and week or two ahead. I'm sure the comet's going to be visible throughout the month of July. It's bright at the moment. It's an easy naked eye object once you know where to look, although binoculars will give you the best view. Go out at the moment in the early morning, half past two, quarter to three, something like that, three o'clock in the morning. And then as we come through to the middle of July, it'll be visible in the evening and perhaps more convenient for many people to see. Make sure you have a look at Comet F3 Neowise. It is a super object and the brightest comet that we've seen in the Northern Hemisphere since 1997. Enjoy your comet.